I suppose we better get started. Feel free to grab extra chairs. I guess there's more. We got a whole room. Thank you guys for coming. This is awesome. My name is John Tice, and uh, I like to write songs. This is like a support group for us, I guess. I don't know. But no, I've been, uh, man, I vaguely remember writing my first song. I'll just give you a short history. I didn't even plan on saying this. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just put together a slideshow and we're going to wing it and have fun. So if you have questions, definitely stop me, whatever. We'll figure it out. I don't know what I'm doing. There's no like plan. So um, we'll just figure it out. But we're just going to talk about songwriting. But I remember being a little kid and writing my first song. Um, and I kind of dabbled my whole life. And then maybe like 15 years ago, I got super serious about it. Anybody remember Kurt from uh, Bridge of Harmony? Kurt Blazing? He was, uh, yeah, he was the best. And he was, uh, he would dish out advice. And I was doing an interview with him one time. And he said that if, if you're going to be a songwriter, you got to get up in the morning with your coffee and do your job and write songs. And I took it to heart and I started writing songs hard. And that was probably like six, seven years ago. And so I've developed a daily practice kind of inspired by Kurt. And uh, I don't know. I just thought it'd be cool to share the love of it. I love it. It's like my therapy. Um, I write a lot of songs and it's just fun to do. And I thought I'd share the love. So I don't know. I went online. I'm really ADHD. So I kind of just went on and I was like, I bet you I could rent a room at the library. And pretty soon I had this scheduled and I was making a flyer. And so here we are. So you guys are kind of like the test people. I'm teaching at the VA too, like next week. And I'm going to try to do more too. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I'm a, like I said, I do my own music. I'm a solo artist, singer songwriter. And then I also have a studio at my house called damn good time studio. Um, and so, yeah, first we'll get into like the basics. Like what do you actually need to be a songwriter? So this is a list of things that are required for you to be a songwriter. You ready? Here we go. Write a song. I guess that's the only one. That's the only one. Okay, that's all you got to do. You got to write a song. So I'm kind of sarcastic. So you're going to get a lot of this. So basically, yeah, that's literally all you have to do. And then you're a songwriter. So people kind of look at stuff as like, oh, it's hard or that's for creative people or whatever. So there you go. Write a song. That's it. That's the class. Thank you guys so much for coming. <laughs> All right. That's the actual end slide, too. I just added that yesterday. So, but basically, music is art. You know, I don't think I have to elaborate on that a whole lot. But, um, you know, anybody can create art. That's what I believe. Some people think I can't do that. I can't paint. I'm not artistic or whatever. And, like, I don't know. I think that's all crap. Honestly, like, I think everybody. Some people are more like prone to being creative. You know, some people are like prone to being better athletes. But I think. You know, anybody could play baseball and anybody could write a song. It's like the degree to which you could excel. So it's like, I don't know, people just need to write songs, I think. So yeah, I think absolutely you can write songs. Anybody here can write a song. You don't even need to be able to play an instrument to write a song. Mm -hmm. There's no rules, only guidelines. So uh, Chris and I were talking about that earlier and Chris was up here in the front and she asked about rules and stuff. And I'm like, if there's rules, I definitely don't know anything about it. Oh, I skipped ahead, didn't I? I'm using this new presentation thing. All right, forget what I just said. Art is equal parts magic and science. That's what I said. Um, and so that's what I always tell people because there's like ways to write songs. There's scales. There's I'm learning about all this crazy math that's involved with music that you absolutely don't need to know. But like, so it's very scientific. But also, if you try to use science to make a good song, it doesn't necessarily seem to work in my experience. So I don't know. I like to talk about that. So it's like, kind of just magic too like it's just you get lucky and i don't know there might be a thing called muses we'll talk more a little, little bit more about that later and yeah there's no rules only guidelines and that's kind of like i said it's just you know how do you write a song what is a song like mozart's a song as much as i hate to say it that cardi b song that was disgusting is a song you know if you don't know what i'm talking about good i'm happy for you um so yeah it's just kind of there's like people that'll tell you how to do it and whatever and it just it is what it is like a three-year-old Singing a melody, that's a song, as far as I'm concerned. So it might not be the best song. You might not want to record it, but it, but it is. All right. And I think, to me, the biggest thing is that it means something to you. Um, I don't know. Like, what's the point if it's not going to be, like, your art? I think if you're trying to make something to reach an audience or to sell something, I feel like, this is my opinion, I feel like it's a wasted opportunity. You know, it's your chance to express yourself and write your song, you know. And, and I don't know. Yeah, you should do that, you know. Even if you're like Weird Al and you make parodies or something. Do the kids know who Weird Al is? I don't know. If you don't, look up Weird Al. Before everybody did parodies on the internet, there was Weird Al. Um, so, the, you know, uh, music theory, if you don't know what that is, that's essentially like the rules of music, kind of like how music works, you know, like what a note is, like all that stuff is kind of music theory, scales, all that. Um, 
you don't necessarily need it, but you don't need it to start. But I think you should if you're going to grow as a writer and learn that sort of stuff. So it's good to learn that sort of thing. Um, even the basics, like your major and minor scales, and that'll help you just put together the chords, just kind of knowing. So like, if you're not familiar with the major scale, um, I should have put that one ahead of Yeah, here, Nashville number system. So this is basically the major scale and the Nashville number system combined here. So essentially, this is the C major scale. So if you were to take a piano and start on C and hit every white key, for the next seven, it makes the C major scale, and it goes so it goes C D E F G A and B, and so they're all the uh, I think they're called natural notes. I'm not a music scholar, but so there there's no sharps or flats basically. And so if you wanted to write a song in the key of C, this is C major, and so it kind of helps sometimes to limit yourself. Um, you can borrow chords from other keys. You can start not on the one chord, like not on the C. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, but so basically this is the major scale and this is uh, if you've ever heard anybody say like oh this is a one four you know five one song so that would you know like i could literally i'm playing a show with my band this saturday i could write a song today bring it to the guys and be like hey we're gonna play this tonight uh it's a fast shuffle it's in c it's a one five four one and they're literally gonna be like okay and we could play that song together and as long as i don't do any crazy stops i expect them to follow they could do it so this is kind of like some of the math people use, and it changes every key. And so um, if this is over your head, like I said, you don't necessarily need this. But to me, this really helped me learning this sort of thing because um, it kind of gives you a framework, and you can study other songs through this and kind of learn it and move on with that. So I don't know. Does anybody have any questions thus far about this or anything? Or? All right, sweet. Means we're doing good. So, but um, so some of them are minors. If you don't know, like the majors and minors, there's different chords, majors, minors. So you got C, C major, D minor, E minor, and then it goes up and so forth. And so, um, so this is all good stuff to learn. And I actually have a chart, which I should have just pulled up right away. Um, I'm going to send you a guys a link, or there's a link here at the end where you can click here. Let's pull it up. Mm. There's a page on my website that's going to have resources for you. So there'll be a screenshot for this at the end. Um, and it actually has this chart right here. So this actually has... Let's see, it get bigger. Ah, it didn't get bigger. I thought it would. Anyway, so this chart basically has all the keys. On the left, it goes from C to B down here. And then it has like the one through seven on top. So that kind of can give you a guideline. So if you want to start figuring that out, but that'll be on the link and all that. And then I also have some of these other resources. We'll get back to that later. So, so yeah, so this is basically, like I said, the Nashville number system and your C major scale. So, um, and I guess the, the hardest part I would think is uh, if I was going to write a song I never had, it's like, where do you even start, right? Would that be the question? I don't know. I would think it would be. So, fun time. <laughs> Try this one. <laughs> Typical musicians, they're late. <laughs> My friends. What's up, guys? How's it going? What's up? Oh, man. All right. So, yeah. So, basically, like, how would you even begin a song? So, there's, there's different ways to do it. Uh, I kind of have what I typically do. And different people do it different ways. And so, um, basically, it kind of starts with some sort of big idea, is, is what I would say. Where do I lost my thing over here? So uh, you can start with a chord progression. And so basically a chord progression is going to be like your sequence of chords. So like, um, oh, let's see, something like, um, I don't even know. I was like Teen Spirit maybe. Let's try that. But the chord progression of that would be uh, F, B flat, G sharp, and C sharp. So it goes. Like that, okay? And it repeats. So that's considered a chord progression. So sometimes I'll actually like sit down and write something like, I don't know how Kurt Cobain wrote that song, but they might have been jamming. He might have just started going. And it was like, oh, cool, I like that. And so a lot of my songs will come from that. Um, I got one, uh, I can't think of any of my songs right now. Like uh, I got one called Could Have Died. It just goes. like that so that one goes from d to a and goes down 
and then it goes G. I'll be honest, I can't remember my chords right now, but. So basically that's what a chord progression is. So a lot of times that's what I'll kind of do is sit down. I'll sit down with that chart and just kind of start playing something. Like I got, you could literally roll the dice. I'll go into that a little more and, uh, and make something up. There's actually a whole section on this. I forgot a whole page, so we'll get back to that. Any questions so far? Am I being too ADD or you guys feel like you can follow? <laughs> All right. Like I said, stop me if you got questions. So. I'd kind of try to approach all these in different angles. Like I said, I write so much that like, I really find myself being repetitive if I don't break it up and do it. So I basically started with a chord progression um, is how I started to learn to write songs. And so I would kind of just sit down and start playing something on guitar and be like, okay, this feels good. And then maybe I would go to my lyric notes and kind of go from there. Um, and so you can also just start with lyrics. Um, Trying to think. Sometimes I'll literally look in my notes and just look at lyrics and just be like, and sing it. And I'll be like, oh my God, that's a thing. And then start writing a song around that. Um, all right, yeah, this is supposed to be my overview page. Uh, melody. You might just have something in your head. I have one where I just had in my head, it was like, do, 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 do. That was in my head for like months. And like eventually I got it out and, and turned it into a song and we actually play it with the band. So that's kind of rewarding. It's not something I usually do, so it's kind of cool. Um, the other thing would be like the riff and the groove. And this was like a lot of rock and like people that are better at instrumental stuff, I imagine, probably write more this way too. And that's kind of just basing it off of like a chunk of the song, um, like a guitar riff, you know, like, um, man, I can't think of anything right now. I'm like blank. Like Longview, even like the bass from Green Day. I don't know if you guys know that one. Um, like it's got a really cool bass line, and that's how that song actually started. Um, I believe Mike Dern was actually on acid. Don't do drugs, but I think he came up with that on acid. <laughs> Is that what it was? Oh man, there's so many good stories like that. Yeah, you know, the Stones like Satisfaction. Do, 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 do. Keith Richards wakes up with a tape recorder and goes, hits play and goes, that sounds like me playing that. I don't know if it's true, but who knows. But yeah, so especially if you're in instruments like, um, I find myself doing that more now. I'm getting better at guitar and stuff. And like, you know, and even like if you're not the songwriter, songwriter, like you could write a chunk and then if you're in a band and bring it to the person that really writes lyrics or whatever and bring it together. So riffs are pretty cool. Um, so yeah, here we go. Here's the slide that I thought I was in before. So basically, what is the chord progression? So like I said, that's like the sequence of the chords. So um, how many chords do you need? One. One. I can think of one song right now that's a BR549 song and it's called 18 Wheels and a Crowbar and it's just an A the whole time. And like, but it's not a boring song at all. It's just the rest of the stuff kind of moves around and the way the lyrics work, like I was blown away when I found out it was a one chord song. Um, there's so many, uh, 18 Wheels and a Crowbar. But there's, I mean, there's so many good three chord songs. The blues is mostly three chords, like country music is three chords in the truth. Um, there's a lot of good two chord songs. Guitars, Cadillacs from Dwight Yoakam is two chords. Uh, you sure hang done it this way. Uh, Nick, can you think of any other two chord songs? Huh? Which one? You got any of those? Okay. Yeah, that's funny. Well, there you go. So yeah, so you can have one or you can like change keys in the middle of a song and go to a different one. So there's, that's what's the beauty of this. It can be like incredibly complex and it can be incredibly intense. Like you could be Mozart or like I said, you can be a three-year-old humming a melody. Like to me, they're all songs. So um, how long does it have to be? Um, again, like it can change chords fast. It can go quick. It can do like a lot of times there's multiple chord progressions in a song. Um, a lot of songs will change from the verse to the chorus and do a different progression. Sometimes they never change. You know, like a song like Folsom Prison, he does two verses, a solo, another verse, a solo, and a verse, and it's over. You know, so there's really no chorus in that one. Um, and so that's like a whole other thing in itself. I'm going to go into more into that later. Oh, yeah. You could literally roll the dice. So like when I talked about that chart, um, it's got to be a way to make that bigger.
thought maybe I'd get it bigger, but anyway, so this chart like it has the one through seven on top. The seventh chord is a diminished chord. It doesn't get used as much. So you could literally sit down and take the dice and roll it and come up with four numbers or three numbers, and that could be your chord progression. And so like it, it sometimes you just get stuck and like I just do weird crap like that. I've never done that one. I actually found that in a YouTube video. Um, but you could easily do that. So I wonder if I can zoom in this way. I just switched to Apple, so I used to know how to work. There we go. Look at that. You can kind of see it. Whoa. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So yeah, so like I said, if we were in C, you could roll the dice and you could do like, you could roll a one and a three and then a five and a one, you know, so you'd go C, E minor, G, C. And then there's no rule like you have to stay at each chord a certain amount of time. It's, it's so wide open. So this is kind of just, I guess today I'm just like trying to show you guys tools and like, Different ways you could do this. There's like a million ways, so it might be overwhelming, but it's like, I don't know. You can like trip, fall on the steps and write a song, you know what I mean? Like it's, literally, it's that easy. You come up with your rhythm, doom, 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 going down. So, all right. This is a fun one. I like this slide. Is originality a thing? Not really anymore. All the good ideas are pretty much taken. I think we're just kind of elaborating on them. It's pretty much all the blues. Uh, a lot of the stuff like modern rock, heavy metal, like hip hop, like country music, a lot of that takes from the blues, you know, ones, fours, fives, uh, like those chords, you know, and so it's kind of the basis of mostly everything. And so, so many of the same genres, as you learn more about music, they, they're all using the same toolkit. You know what I mean? Like you could take a welder and you could weld like heavy earth moving machinery, or you could weld little delicate, you know, art things and like, and so it's kind of that sort of concept where it's like we're all using the same principles you know and, and getting there so um so to prove to you that you don't have any original ideas this is the wikipedia page for one five six four which is one of the most popular chord progressions in the world you ready to have your mind blown so here's a list of people who have used this chord progression popularly let's sort it by artists this is my favorite part i just did this yesterday so you'll see here, Beyonce has got two of them on the list. Blink-182 has three of them. Damn It and Rock Show are two of them I definitely know. I'm sure there's more too, but uh, let's see, it gets pretty heavy down here with some of them. Um, where were some of them more? Yeah, look at Lady Gaga has got three of them. So Hair, Poker Face, and Edge of Glory all use the same chord progression. Then, and mind you, they're in different keys. So like... That's what makes them different. The tempo could be different. The feel could be different. But those sequence of chords in that order is the way that it is with that one. So um, my favorite, though, is down here. We got Red Hot Chili Peppers got three. But you know who really loves this progression? Look at all those T-Swifts. You want to make some T-Swift money? There you go. I just unlocked it for you. And so you'll see you got C major, G major, B major, A minor, D minor. She duplicates G major, and then she's got E flat minor. So six of the seven are in different keys. Um, it doesn't say what time signature. Um, we didn't talk about that at all. But so there's ways to make it different. But like as far as the way the chords go in order, like if it reminds you of something, sometimes that's okay. You're gonna repeat yourself, and you're gonna maybe do things that are similar. And and so if I do this class again, the Beatles. I only saw one on here. It was just Let It Be. Zombie from the Cranberries. That's pretty fun. So, Wikipedia is fun. All right. All right. So, this is a fun one. Find yourself accidentally copying. It happens. Um, what is it like? Uh, it's like. I'm, like some super famous like Mozart melody. I was on my guitar one time when I was a kid and I like picked this whole thing out and I was like, I just wrote the sickest melody and I went and I played it back and I was like, dude, this is like Mozart or something. Like I totally ripped it off. So you'll find yourself copying. Um, so yeah, change your feel, you know, your tempo, your key, swap out chords. So, oh man, I'm not gonna be able to see this from here. I wonder if you get the chords. This actually happened to me recently and I wrote one of my favorite songs doing this. I forgot what the chords are, G, D, A minor, C. So there's this Turnpike Troubadour song, it goes, uh... So 
So it uses G, D, A minor, and C. And so I was in North Dakota and we were writing, or I was writing the song, I sat down to write, and I started going just slower. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. I love this. I'm gonna write something to this. And all of a sudden I'm like, crap, this is like a Turnpike Troubadour song. So then I was like, hmm, what if I change the key and moved it up to C and then changed the feel? So I was like. And we'll never get sued by the Turnpike Troubadours because it's a different key and a different feel. And if I look up that progression, so many people probably already use that. So it's like, you can kind of use that to your advantage and kind of move things around a little bit. And so, but yeah, so that's my example of that. And Nick, that walked in late too, he actually helped me write that song. So it's one of my favorite ones. Shameless plug, you can come hear us play with our band. There, I mean, like I said, there's like seven, you know, chords essentially. So it's like hard to even, yeah, come up with something new. And so, you're kind of just putting your own little spin on it. Like I was listening to the Stones today and uh, it's like they're using, if you strip away some of the stuff like the auxiliary percussion instruments and all that, it starts to sound more like other music, but like you take this chunk of something, you take this chunk of something and you put it together and a lot of times it's not even intentional and that's like this new thing, you know? And so it kind of, I'll be honest, I don't know, does he? Yeah. You know which one he uses? Open G, okay. Yeah. It is, you know, and even like the, the way like the people that are really good at music are getting there I'm seeing is like, so you can play a C like this, you know, and you can play a G like this, and like everybody learns to play like that. And it's like, oh cool, you know, that's, this is a C chord. I spent most of my guitar career thinking, play a C chord, that's the C chord, but there's a C chord here, and there's a C chord here, you know, and they're all over the place. And so there's this whole different way, so you could even come into this being like, you know, play your C here, and play your F here, then your G up here. That's like way cooler than. So it's like doing things like that is what's gonna make things interesting. Like putting your own spin on it, you know? Like it's boring learning scales and stuff, but it's like I heard something the other day and they're like, learn all that crap so you can forget it. And then that's what happens. Like you learn it all, it's in your hands, then you start to forget it, and that's when you kind of start to make magic. And yeah, I mean, most people that are really good can improv their way into stuff, and it's all about happy accidents. And that's where the muses come in too, probably. <laughs> all right, we better move along though. I don't know where we're at with time. I got, we're almost halfway through the slides and we're about halfway at almost, so. So, but yeah, so that's basically how I turn, like I said, seven and seven to forever with me. And like I said, it's one of my favorite songs. And, and you know, it's kind of, I guess even if you wanted to take some of the risk out of it and you're like, I'm not smart enough to find a good chord progression. Take somebody else's. Change the key. Change the tempo. Change the feel, and stuff like that. Does everybody know? Like, uh, you guys know about like time signatures and stuff at all? Mostly. Okay. If not, you want to ask about it later too. Feel free. This Google slide thing is so crazy. I could actually set up a thing so you guys could ask questions through your phones, but I don't want to get too crazy for the first one. So you could ask questions anonymously. So that's yeah. That's how you start with a progression. So next is lyrics. And this is, like I said, these are different ways that I've written songs and things that I know about. And so, like, there's probably a lot of other crap out there, too. And so, um, a lot of times I'll start with a title or a chunk of lyrics. Um, I record a lot of different things. And I text myself. When I'm lonely, I always have someone to text. So, you can steal this if you want. I just texted this myself today, so texted this to myself today. You got to get up, grind, and pay these bills. So, like, that could be a line, you know, or something like that. 
Simon, quit writing my song in the middle. That's my song. <laughs> but like, somebody said something. I was driving Lyft. I drive Lyft today too. Like, somebody said something. I'm like, oh crap, there it is. So like, there's my chunk or my title. And like, you know, sometimes it's not necessarily like that could be the whole concept of the song. Or it might just be that Forever With Me song I was just playing you. So Nick and I are in a band. We were in North Dakota and we were talking about playing um, at this. We were doing a five day stand and it started on a Tuesday. And he's like, when we get in there on the Tuesday, it's going to be dead. We're going to be playing to the walls. And I was like, holy crap. So the song starts out playing to the walls at the Lonesome Dove on a Tuesday night in Mandan. And then I had no idea where I was going. I just wrote that and then kind of kept going. And then he was supposed to be upstairs working remotely and came downstairs and helped me finish the song. So, um, but yeah, start with a title or a chunk. Like I said, it can be whatever. Um, the best way is to get better ideas and better lyrics is to read more and listen. Eavesdrop on people. I don't know. Just kind of like conversations. Um, like I said, that conversation this morning, I don't remember what was said, but it just, I don't know. Listen to the crap that's in your head. Um, one of my statistically most popular songs is called Sense. And I think I wrote most of the chorus just like off the top of my head. And it just, came to me in the kitchen and I was like, wrote it down. And like the best part during this process, if you're brainstorming is just not to censor yourself. It's like, I don't know, figure it out later. Just record the ideas as they come. Um, especially if you believe in like, you know, any of the like uh, muses and stuff like that and all that. I want to say it was like Michael Jackson or somebody they're quoting. It was another pop star. If it wasn't Michael Jackson, it was another one like at his caliber. And he said that when he got an idea, he would grab it and work so hard because he believed in muses and that if he didn't take it, Prince was going to get it. I thought that was hilarious. The muses are like the, uh, I don't know technically what the hell muses are, to be honest. I think they're like the, they were the daughters of, is it Aphrodite? Yeah. So they're from Greek and Roman. Yeah, the, Essentially, that's how I'm using it, is, is what he's saying. So technically, they're each of the nine goddesses, the daughters of Zeus, who preside over the arts and sciences. So they kind of are watching over in mythology. And essentially, it's definition two says, a person or a personified force who is the source for inspiration for a creative artist. And so essentially, like, they're the ones that are inspiring you to write all that stuff or do whatever, if you believe in that stuff. I don't know what's real. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't even give myself like five minutes to remember anything. I literally get it in my phone or it's gone. So there's, you know, Prince got the rest of them. Record your ideas in the moment. There you go. No, no. He's living on through somebody else, I'm sure. But yeah, so that's the biggest thing. Record the ideas in the moment. And like I said, I put my phone, my uh, own number in my phone as the idea box. And if I pull it up right here, where is it? Like literally on my homepage, right there, the idea box. So I just pull it up and click that and text myself and, and talk to my phone since I don't have friends. But yeah, otherwise you lose them, you know, and I don't know. I've heard different people say if it's a good idea, you'll remember it. Um, that's the other thing too. Like people will tell you the exact opposite and they both have written great songs. That's what's fun about it. I listen to a lot of interviews and it's like, I don't know. So this is kind of like I said, my philosophy, so. Go and leave and defy me and write good songs if you want. That's great. I'm happy for you. Uh, it's good, good to generally stick to one theme or idea. Um, I struggle with this, you know, ADHD, all that. But no, it's, uh, it's easy to kind of spread it out a little bit. So I've been told, like, you know, what is the big idea? And that's kind of like what you're, if there's a chorus, that's what the chorus is about or the title's about and kind of not get too far off of that. So I'll typically write a chorus. Um, and then that's the big idea of the song. And then the verses kind of lead up to and support that. And so usually the, the chorus is more uh, I don't know, kind of profound. And the verse usually has like the more details and stuff. Um, I, think. I should have been better prepared for this to think of ones that I could use examples. Um, hmm. All right, Pickup Man. Anybody know that song? Uh, something women like about a pickup man. It's a Joe Diffie song from the 90s. So if you haven't heard it, I'll explain it good enough. So um, the chorus just goes, you can set my truck on fire, roll it down a hill, but I still wouldn't trade it for a Coupe de Ville. I got an eight foot bed that never has to be made. You know, if it weren't for trucks, we wouldn't have tailgates. I met all my wives. He said three. I looked it up. 
I met all my wives in traffic jams because there's something women like about a pickup man. There's not like a story there. There's not, that's the general idea. It's just there's something women like about a pickup man. I can imagine a couple dudes sitting down, sipping whiskey, coming up with that. and like, we should write a song about that. And then they wrote a song about that. And so then you go into the verse and the verse he taught, the first verse is about his first truck was when he was a kid pushing it around on the ground. Second verse, uh, when I turned 16, I saved a few hundred bucks. My first car was a pickup truck. And then the third verse, um, I can't remember how it starts, but basically, oh, most Friday nights I can be found. So it's like current day. He's talking about being at the drive-in in the back of his uh, Chase Lounge. And apparently if you're a pickup man, you don't have to wait in line for popcorn. That's the theme of that part. So that would, to use that as an example, basically, the big idea is there's something women like about a pickup man. And that theme comes around when he's a baby, he hauls a Barbie doll bed for the girl next door. She tries to pay him with a kiss. He began to understand there's something women like about a pickup man. And then it brings you into the pickup man chorus, the big idea. The second one is essentially the same thing. Like he picks up some girl from high school. She's walking. He sees her walking, picks her up, and she's like, I didn't know you were a pickup man. Back to the chorus. Last one again, too. Same thing. Like, I never have to wait in line at the popcorn stand because there's something women like about a pickup man. These are the songs that are selling records, people. I love that song. We play that every show. I cannot wait to play that song. I love it. So ever since I was a little kid. But, but those are the things that stick with people. You know, it's like if we're going to, you know, divert a little bit and talk about themes, it's like that's stuff people can identify with, you know, maybe not you personally, but a lot of people do and, and did. And so, um, but yeah, so that's kind of how you can tie those things together. Um, it's one example, but I'm proud of myself. That was a pretty good example. <laughs> anyway, it's good to keep it simple. Um, and as far as like, maybe simple for you, I guess, yeah, go ahead, first question. Yeah. I mean, that would be called like a double entendre, but I've never even thought about that. If that's, if they even meant that. I mean, country music likes, Country music loves a play on words and like, yeah, stuff like that. And so, um, I don't know if that one is, but I think that's like a double entendre, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. And so a double entendre, I think it's like, would they call that a literary device? Yeah. Okay. All right. I just watch YouTube videos. I'm not really educated. Yeah. But the country loves that. And, um, as long as we're talking about like country too, country loves rhymes. And your music does not have to rhyme. It absolutely doesn't. Um, you know, if you're going to try to be a rapper, it might be weird if you don't rhyme. But, um, and essentially that stuff uses the same theory too. Like a lot of rappers um, use that formula where somebody will actually, there's people like if you're a rap producer, you make the hook with the chorus usually and the beat. And then you find a rapper to rap over it or give it to them. So there's that big idea. And then that rapper fills in those verses to support that big idea. So hip hop's huge in that. Um, and, and keeping it simple too. Hip hop is really good at using repetition to drive home ideas and, and stuff like that. So, uh, but yeah, we're all using the same rules for sure. Yeah. I never thought about that with pickup, man. That's kind of funny. All right. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So, keep it simple um, for you. Keep it simple for you, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, if you're like, you know, Getty Lee and your rush, you know, like that's probably easy for them. But if you tried to write that on your first go out, that would be hard. You know, um, Simon and I started making a record and his songs are a lot more complex than mine, but that's the way his brain works and that's the way it goes. So it's like for him that works. And I'm like, wow, these are complex, but like, I don't know, maybe it feels complex to you too. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the keep it simple. Next one with the write about things you connect with. Like, again, you know, it's your art. It's your expression of yourself. Um, I don't know. It just write about stuff you connect with is probably the easiest way to get started. And then you can always kind of take on different characters and different roles. Um, I think a cool version of a song is like uh, John Prine, a uh, songwriter. Songwriters really like him. Um, he has like the song Angel from, the Go Angel from Montgomery. And the first words are, I am an old woman. And he's not. So. He just kind of took on that role and wrote this song from the perspective, and that's really good when people do that too. So that is a thing that you can do. There's also, oh, that's my next point. Wow, look at this segue. Truth, not fact. I'm proud of myself. 
Um, essentially, that's what that is. It's like, write your truth, but it doesn't necessarily have to be your fact. It might be your emotions and the way you felt them, but it might be presented in a different way. And I actually have a video about this that we're going to watch after this. This is a quote from Tom T. Hall. Anybody know who Tom T. Hall is? He was great. He, uh, he was known as the storyteller. He was one of Nashville's best writers back in the 70s and 80s and whatnot. And so if it don't for it, force, if it don't fit, don't force it. There we go. Easy for me to say. Tom T. Hall. And he was, like I said, known as the storyteller. And so, all right, here's this little video. This is like three minutes long here. And so this, she talks about, um, yeah, truth, not fact, and kind of explains that. And so this lady has some really good stuff. I really enjoy her. And uh, there's links to the rest of the video. Like I said, if at the end there's going to be a QR code up. Otherwise, you can go to my website. It says it there, too. And it'll have links to this video, the chord chart. Um, I'm going to try to put this slideshow up there, too, if that helps you at all. So here's this. That was your bonus tip. Study your heroes. So uh, I, I didn't think about this earlier, but uh, Folsom Prison, Johnny Cash. I imagine most of you guys know that. If you don't, it's... Uh, um, I hear the train of comments coming around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom prison and time keeps dragging on. So he's writing from the perspective of a prisoner. And when Johnny Cash, a lot of people don't know this, but uh, when he was in the military, he was stationed overseas and he would sit and listen to radio transmissions, I believe it was. And he actually would try to interpret these things. And what he was doing was so secretive, like he was essentially living the life of a prisoner because these guys couldn't have outside contact. So essentially it's said that he drew on that experience. Um, if you watch the movie Walk Up the Line, they basically make it look so seamless. Like he gets the guitar, he sits down, they watch a film about Folsom Prison, the next day he sits down and writes Folsom Prison, you know? And so it's like, but he essentially was inspired by these people and was like, oh, I know what, I, I could imagine what that feels like. And then put himself in that place. So I think that's a good example of it. And, and so, yeah, I like this gal's videos, like I said. I forget what the channel is even called. Um, I'll put a link for it at the end, but let's just click it and see what it's called. Walmart ads, the Walgreens. How to write songs, there you go, that's simple enough. So there's a lot of videos on there. And like I said, there's a link to that one on my website. I don't know if I've heard that one. Which record is that on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, some parallel experiences, you know. I wrote one called Doing My Time, um, and it was about working in a warehouse. <laughs> I had made a series of bad decisions in my life, and I actually had quit playing professionally and went back to work full-time in a warehouse. and. It was essentially like I looked at it and I was like, you know, like I got to, I made mistakes and I'm here because of my mistakes. And I basically looked at it like I was doing time. Like I got to show up here every day and do my time and fix my life. And essentially, and so I ended up writing that song and we were playing it for a while. We might record it. I don't know, but, but it's essentially like you could listen to it and it sounds like it's, the chorus sounds like it's about prison and then the verses are basically like about how my job felt like a prison. So, um. But yeah, anything else about lyrics before we move on? All right. Like I said, if you have questions later, you can always email me and stuff too. There's a contact form that may or may not be working on my website, according to what I heard. So, uh, but melody, like I said, um, you can start with a melody. You know, I had that one that followed me around for a while. Um, you can even sit down on a, with an instrument and do this. And I've successfully done this like maybe twice. And by successfully, I mean I actually completed a song. It doesn't mean it was good. Um, There you go. That's what it is. I just was like, I need to write a melody, and I literally did that. I've been afraid of losing myself. It doesn't take much. So, And I don't even think I followed that completely, but that's what inspired that, and I wrote that song. And that one's in our show, too. We'll play it right after Ring of Fire. The band shows are also on the website too, shameless plug. <laughs> I 
Uh, so just under my name, John Tice, and then the band is the rhythm department. So it's John Tice and the rhythm department when we do that stuff. So, yeah. But yeah, I got a Facebook page under John Tice Music, and then JohnTiceMusic.com is the website, and it's got all the shows listed. I do a lot of solo shows or duo shows with Nick. So, all right. So yeah, you can use an instrument. Um, anybody know H-E-R, that gal that sings, plays? Is it her? Did she actually say her? Is it? Okay. I'm, I'm not up in my stuff. I watched a video with her one day. Yeah, she's definitely. I've seen her in like a few things and she's shown up in my world, but obviously not enough to know what her name is. So um, I watched a video with her and she just kind of started singing gibberish words. It was just kind of like, uh, or just even like, do, 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 you know, or something like that. Or like anything to get a melody. Like it could actually be words. It could be, I've heard people say gibberish. I don't even know how to imitate it without making myself feel stupid. But anything to get yourself to a melody. Um, and so for me, what I think starting here can often lead to catchier songs. Uh, the melody is kind of what sticks with people. You know, that's what you end up humming. You walk away, you grab that. A lot of the, they call them hooks, the parts that grab you might be in the actual music and in the lyrics or in the melody or both of them. So they, it really gra can grab onto you. All right, and I think it's, in my experience, it's a little harder to come with chords if you're not as experienced if you start with the melody because now you're trying to match the music to it, whereas the music kind of almost leads you to it. And in a way, you kind of start doing both sometimes. Like, I'll start with a, a, a melody on a chord, and then I'm like, do 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 And I'm like, oh, what chord does that do? So you kind of start combining the two together almost. Um, and so... But it can be harder, definitely, if you come up with a melody, trying to find those chords, and that's where your music theory and just really studying other people and learning a lot of songs, like just learning what other people are doing and then learning how they're doing it or what they're doing is really huge for any of this, you know, learning to play instruments and all that. And, mm -hmm. All right, you can start with a riff or a groove. And so, you know, that's going to be like your guitar riff, something that's going to jump out. Uh, it could be a piano riff. It could be just about anything. Um, something that the instrument is playing that has some sort of a melody to it. Um, it can be really complicated or really simple. It doesn't really matter. So that's what a riff is. And then a groove is kind of like the feel of the song. Um, the groove is kind of like the beat and kind of how the beat works. Like, you know, like... Like a rock song has like a boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, kind of fast, like punk rock, I guess, is more like a doom, chick, doom, chick, doom, chick, you know, and that's like the groove of that, you know, if you listen to, um, man, I'm terrible at coming up with examples right now. I'm trying to think of like Sympathy of the Devil is almost like, and they do that. So it's, that's kind of like the groove is like, it's not always the beat, but it's, I got to get better at defining that. You want to talk more about that later we can talk later all right so a lot of times you can just grab an instrument and start playing stuff um sometimes i come up with stuff and then i'm like oh that could be a song and i start writing one around that um noodling basically just means playing around and that's where like i said learning your instrument or whatever it is and really trying to figure it out can really help you kind of just come up with stuff like you get to a point where like i would say i'm like an advanced intermediate guitar player and i'm starting to get to that point where like if I'm with a band or somebody does something, I can play something with it. It might not be the greatest thing, but I can show up and start to play. And it's, you start to do things by feel and less by like thinking about it. Kind of like if someone hits the brakes in front of you, you don't think about it, you just break. That's the way your instrument starts to be in your hands. And um, Nick likes to say it's like language. Like it's as easy as speaking, like you're learning little chunks of it. And so, yeah, the better you get with your instrument, the easier that's gonna be. And so, um, and you can do anything. Um, as far as getting a riff or a groove, you can hop on something else, you know, and try hopping on a piano if you're a guitar player and just start picking at keys and do something that sounds cool or whatever. Um, drum loops are super cool. I get caught up a lot doing the same crap because I write damn near every week. Well, pretty much every week. And so the one day I'm like, I got no ideas. And so I put on a drum loop. Oh, I bet I still have that on this phone. I'm not going to remember which one it is. I'll take a second to see if I can find it. But So I have an app on here. Um, if you're on Android, you can use an app called Loops, L-O-O-P-Z. I should have figured out which one this one was. So 
But basically it has all these beats on there. Then you can change the speed. This is it. So this is slow six. So like this is not something I would typically do. So I was like, uh, I just put this on and I'm like. I was like, holy crap, I like that, you know? So the beat brought me there. That would be a groove. Like I would never go. That just wouldn't be something that I would do. And so this brought me to that other direction and kind of did that. And then I looked at my book and I'm like, oh my God, I came up with, I might have stole it from TV, honestly. It's so easy to steal lines from good writing. But I had the line, tonight I'm getting seven kinds of stone. So I was just like. Tonight I'm getting seven kinds of stone. Cause it's just me left at home and I'm lost. So I guess I'll just sit and get high. And there's half a verse. So like I would have never wrote, wrote that song if it wasn't for that beat. So that's a, a cool thing to get you going on something. And, and uh, I used to honestly make a lot of hip hop beats. And that's what really inspired me too is doing stuff like that is you'd program drums or do something and then create your own drum beat or whatever and start adapting it. So. But yeah, so I have links on my website to these two. There's one for, uh, I'll just look at it. I forget what it's called. There's one for uh, Apple too. Mm. Yes, right there. L-O-O-P-Z. And there's even a link here too. Um, and then Drum Genius is on the App Store. I've never used it. I don't have an iPhone. I got a MacBook and an Android. Don't judge me. I also wear Vans with my, uh, or no, I wear Vans socks with my DCs too. People make fun of me. Okay, back on track. And so, yeah, and so that could lead to something and that could be the center of it. Um, and then sometimes, like, that inspires you to do something else on top of that. And maybe the original idea gets thrown away. Like, it could even get abandoned. So that's kind of cool. Um, so those are kind of like the four main ways to kind of start a song in my experience. Like I said, there's probably more. That's just what I know. All right, I'll try to go through some of the rest of this here a little faster. We are running a little later than I thought, but if you've got to get up and leave at any time, just feel free to do that. And like I said, I didn't really have a plan for this, so. Um, but yeah, like your chorus, like I said, we kind of talked about some of this stuff. That's your big idea, and it kind of ties everything together. Your ver verses support your big idea. Um, some of the stuff is good, you know, examine some of your favorite songs and look it up against this and see if they match it. And, um, so many things go against all the rules and do what you're not supposed to do. Um, technically, you know, we love distorted guitars and all that, like that's noise. And that was at one time undesirable. And so like taste change, things change, all kinds of stuff changes. Um, the bridge, if you know what a bridge is, that's when like the song kind of changes a little bit and has a different section. It usually brings you back to the chorus. Um, I've literally written maybe three of them. And I think one of the songs I perform actually has it in there and that's about it. And so um, commercial music, uh, like country music especially, they like to use a lot of bridges and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Not necessarily. Um, people like to go to like a minor chord that's in the key to the bridge. The one song that I have, um, it's in C. Um, and both the verse and the chorus start with C. And then the bridge starts with A minor. And so, um, but that's, I've heard that before. But like I said, I'm not a bridge writer, so I'm not big on that. So, and it's not for any reason. I'm not against him. It just, I've heard if you wrote the song and you feel like you have more to say, put it in the bridge. You know, I have an op optimistic song called Maybe, um, and it's like basically maybe my life will get better. And then the, the bridge goes to maybe I ain't on the right track, or maybe I'll never make it there. And then it flips, or maybe I'm not out on my ass and I'm going somewhere. So it kind of flips and gets negative for a second and then comes back. So it creates a contrast. I, I wrote that song so long ago, I don't remember if I did that on purpose or happy accidents. Happy accidents to your friends. Um, and then, yeah, extras, other stuff in songs. There's intros, um, musical hooks, solos, outros, 
Um, you guys kind of know what those are. Essentially, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, musical hooks are going to be anything that kind of is one of those things that's meant to grab your attention and kind of repeats a lot. It might repeat, like I said, different parts, different instruments. Um, yeah, breakdowns are like the parts where sometimes it changes. We don't see as much of that, but that's pretty much what they would take the beats out of and make. That's actually where the expression uh, break beats, and they would loop break beats and do break dancing. That's where all that came from, from hip hop. So, uh, different styles use these differently. Um, like I said, they're, some of them don't have them at all. You know, some songs don't have a chorus. Yeah. So, like, um, I wish I could have a good example for you. But when it just kind of like gets to like a groovy instrumental part sometimes, I guess is how I would describe it. Um, I think a funk like right away kind of does that. And like, <sighs> okay. Is that where like it would go like halftime and stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's referenced in the same way, yeah. Uh, but yeah, double entendre, there you go. Writing devices, literary devices. So, um, but yeah, I wish I could, like I said, I'll have to come up with better song examples for this stuff. And so, but you know, if you're not satisfied, I am offering full refunds. I've been holding on to that joke. I forgot to use that. Is the camera still going? I am filming this too, so I got this mic on, so hopefully it works. Um, but yeah, so you use these different things to build contrast, suspense, and tension. And that's what makes your songs good. Um, if you keep doing the same thing and it's like, it just, it's boring. So the um, way to do that is to build contrast, suspense, and tension with the different parts of the songs. And uh, dynamics is a great way. That means some parts are loud, some are quiet, some are full, some are very empty. You know, you might have your first verse and it kind of builds. It gets to the chorus and it's big. And it gets to the second verse and it might drop out and get a little quieter and then it kind of starts that build up again. And, and so there needs to be like some sort of payoff, I guess. And people are like, oh yeah, it's resolved. And that's the beauty. Like there's all these things that are operating and music, like I said, part of the reason music is magic is like you can have a PhD and spend your whole life studying or you can know, you can be a baby. And like babies are my favorites at shows. I'm at a brewery and someone walks around with a baby. Babies are the best fans. They love it. They don't care. They love it. They love it. Put them down, they're dancing, they're moving around, they're just, it's, it's, it's in us, man. So, um, yes. <sighs> Probably a good theory. Yeah. I mean, I've never looked into that. That's a good theory. Songbirds. Oh, yeah. Who Taught the Birds? That's a song right there. Simon, that sounds like a Simon Ekman song, Who Taught the Birds? <laughs> write that one down. You gotta give him credit though. Co-written by. Oh man. All right. Worried about repetition? I sure am. Uh, you might even like write your second song, and it might sound like your first one, and you might even rewrite the same song. I've rewritten the same songs. I write other people's songs. Um, I was in a songwriting challenge, and like, uh, I, I I wrote I wrote this melody. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Except for I didn't write it. It's When Doves Cry by Prince. It wasn't until I posted it for the song challenge. But So um, you can change your starting point. That's when I start feeling rep repetitive. I'll be like, okay, today I'm going to start with uh, a lyric or I'm going to start with a melody instead of doing a progression. or like, So mixing it up in that way. Um, like I said, the loops or the drum apps can get you outside of your original box and kind of do that. Um, even, like I said, taking the chords from another song and playing them slower or faster or a step higher or lower or all that, like, just mess with it. Um, try a capo. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but on a guitar, I had it on here before. So basically, I just learned the other day that guitars are based around the key of C which is fun. So this is a C chord, okay? A C shape, and it's making the sound of a C. So now if I take this capo, and I put it on two, instead of being here on the C note, I'm gonna move two up to the D note. So now you're gonna play it the same way. So if you know how to play a guitar, you can move it up, and now all of a sudden, now we're in the key of D, and I'm using a C shape. So if I went, Let's 
let's say I write something to that and it's too high to sing, now I can bring it back down and... So that can help you change and you can even put it all the way up here. Like I'm not a fan of it and it gets harder with intonation. But I used to play with somebody that had a song up here. That's not on the key. But yeah, so you can mess around with that. So it just, again, it can get you outside of what you're doing. Um, one thing I didn't write down is uh, I used to, I, I mostly play with a pick, but I'll start to do finger picking to kind of like mess around and do something different and, and ring the notes out different. Um, that works. Change the way you play. I'm ahead of myself. This is great. Um, so yeah, basically just change the way you play it, you know what I mean? And, and try to do something different. Change the tempo, change the groove, change your time signature. Um, time signature is, if you don't know what that is, that's a good one to look up into theory. Change your instrument, hop on something else. Uh, I've written songs on piano. Um, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. You can even write a cappella. You don't need an instrument. 